Hi there, Don McVeigh here with Paper Tray Inc. Today we're talking about how to add heat embossed sentiments to watercolored backgrounds. It's a really popular trend that's been popping up all over Pinterest and the internet lately with lovely watercolored backgrounds and a really pretty sentiment right in the center. So today we're going to look at a couple of different techniques for creating those beautiful watercolored backgrounds as well as a couple of different ways you can add a really pretty heat embossed sentiment. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're talking about uh, heat embossing sentiments onto watercolored backgrounds. You can achieve that look a couple of different ways. The first way I'm going to show you is by heat embossing first with clear embossing powder. So I've got Versamark ink here, and I've got a sentiment. This is the thank you sentiment from Think Big Favorites 18. We're going to use this big thank you. For this technique, I think it works best if you use a stamp that doesn't have quite so much detail. Um, so the nice big sort of block letters here work really well for this. Now I've got some clear embossing powder and this is just an old scrap piece of cardstock that I will pour the powder onto and it can catch all the excess for me. Now we're going to heat emboss this. Okay, so I have heat embossed this with the heat tools to set that clear embossing powder. So you can see it's very faint. You almost can't see it. But that's where the fun part happens. So we're going to go to our water coloring. I've got just a clear, um, some nice, fresh, clean water here. And couple of different paint brushes. This one's just a big wide bristled brush and I'm just brushing on some water to get started. You want the cardstock damp but not too wet and then I'm going to take a smaller um, round brush and I've got just a regular inexpensive um, watercolor set here. You can get these at any craft store. Goodness, your kids might even have one that you could borrow. Obviously, you can see here this is just basic primary colors. And I'm just going to do sort of a color wash with brush strokes back and forth, back and forth with this green color. When you, when your brush gets too dry, add a little more water. Um, if you get a little bit too much color, add a little more water and that will soften it up. Um, more water makes it a little softer and lighter and more color obviously will make it a little more intense. So what we're going to do is just brush right over that embossed sentiment portion. And as you can see, the embossing resists the water and the paint so the sentiment really pops and allow, is allowed to really sort of shine. If you're new to watercolor this is a really great technique to start out with because it's just brush strokes back and forth. You can totally do this and when you end up with a piece that looks really pretty you'll kind of feel like a, a watercolor rock star which is awesome. So just back and forth, anywhere you want the color to be more intense, add a little bit more color. Like I said, if you want to soften anything, just add a little bit more water. This is super free form, super easy. Anybody can do this. As you can see, I want the portion around the sentiment to be a bit darker. So that's the, the white sentiment will pop even more. And then I'm letting it get lighter toward the top for sort of an ombre effect. If at any point you feel like you've gotten too much, just grab a paper towel. You can just dab that on you can also dab off the um, 
water that's maybe pooled on top of your sentiment. And then you get a really great look at what it's going to look like when it's finished. Oh, I love that green. That is all there is to it. I'm going to set this piece aside and let it dry. And now we're going to take a slightly different approach. I want to show you another trick that you can do when you're watercoloring that's going to get a little bit different look. If you don't love that brush stroke look, um, we're starting out the same way here with wetting down our cardstock. Um, and then we're going to go back in with our smaller brush and this time we're going to achieve a little bit more of a modeled effect just by dabbing the color on into the water. You just dab it on and then it sort of does its own thing. It spreads, it bleeds a bit and it kind of goes wherever it wants to go. But I think you'll see when we finish here, the effect is really pretty and quite different from the brush stroke look. Also, you can see here I've got a bristle that has come off. I will tell you, if this is something you plan to do a lot of, you're probably going to want to invest in a decent set of brushes. My brushes are very inexpensive and they shed onto my work, which is obviously not ideal. <laughs> that may be something I need to invest in at some point. Anyway, we're just dabbing on the color, letting it mix with the water that we've already laid down on the cardstock. And we get this really pretty look. It's a lot more splotchy and sort of modeled than the, the lines of the brush stroke. I'm going to leave a few white spots here and there just because I kind of like how that looks. But same deal here. I'm going to try and add more color at the bottom. So that when I put the sentiment on here, we get the same um, that same sort of look with the darker color at the bottom and the lighter at the top. So the sentiment really has a great place to sort of be anchored. Okay, now I'm going to set this one aside and let it dry. Okay, so both of our panels are dry now. So now we're going to get to the other way that you can add heat embossing to watercolor and that is to just heat emboss right over the top of your watercolor. Now for this technique obviously you have to wait until your watercolor is completely dry Otherwise, you're going to end up with embossing powder sticking in places that you don't want it sticking. So, just going to line this up. Again, I'm stamping with Versamark ink, so that's the clear uh, watermark ink. And this time I'm going to use white embossing powder. You could certainly use... Um, different colors of embossing powder here that would give you an opportunity to play with color on color and certainly you could do the same when you're embossing you can add a lot of different colors in to your embossing or to your watercolor I'm sorry when you're when you are watercoloring you can mix and match lots of different colors um, but for today I wanted to just show you that green um, just what you can do and the different techniques that you can do even with just one color. So now we're going to use our heat tool to heat emboss this sentiment. 
Okay, so the sentiment has been heat embossed, and you can see that white embossing powder is totally set. And now we're going to take both of these panels, and I just want to adhere them to a white card base. Now, when we do this, as you can see, the cardstock is warped. Um, you could certainly invest in some watercolor paper, which would prevent a lot of that from happening. However, if you're just new to this and you just want to play along with this Make It Monday challenge and see how you like this watercolor thing, um, you can certainly use Paper Tray's Stamper Select white cardstock, which is what I've used here. Um, it's a nice thick cardstock, so it holds the water fairly well. Um, and when you're, I'm, I am intending to adhere these just flat on the card front rather than using any kind of foam adhesive. So because I'm going to do that, I'll be able to make it really flat just by using kind of a lot of adhesive on the back. This is more adhesive than I would normally use, but because I really want this to lay flat, you just want to use plenty of adhesive. And honestly, there's not much else on this card anyway, so you might be spending a little bit more on adhesive on this one card, but you haven't really put a lot of other embellishments or anything on here so it kind of balances out a little bit. So there is our first card and now we're going to go back to the brush stroke look and we're going to do the same thing. Adhesive all the way around all four sides as well as some of the middle. We just want to anchor all those kind of warpy places and make sure that it lays as flat as it can. And there we have it. Two very different watercolor looks and uh, this one obviously is the one where we use the white embossing powder. This is the one where we used clear and the white cardstock is what is showing through. Um, so two different embossing looks and two different watercolor looks. So now it's just up to you to decide which one you prefer. I cannot wait to see your take on this week's challenge. I hope this video has left you very inspired to bust out your watercolor tools and your heat embossing supplies. We can't wait to see your take on this week's challenge. If you would like to play along, be sure to head over to Nicole Hetty's blog where you can leave a link to your project so we can all see what you came up with. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Don McVeigh with Make It Monday.